Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, 90% Native. I am Michelle and I garden in Northern Virginia in zone 7A. This video is another in a series of native plant spotlights that I'm doing. And today I'm gonna to be talking about Slender Mountain Mint or Pecanthemum tenuifolium. <laughs> and I'm not gonna say that again. So like I said, this is Slender Mountain Mint. I absolutely adore mountain mints. I think I probably have everyone that's native to this area growing in my yard right now, and they just attract the pollinators like you wouldn't believe. In the summer, when these guys start blooming, they are just covered with all the pollinators. And it's just a lovely thing to be able to sit and watch and see them in action. This particular mountain mint will take full sun and going into partial shade. And this plant likes a medium to medium wet soil. So these get to be about two feet tall, which is a little shorter than the other mountain mints. So maybe a little bit more manageable as far as staking goes. And they will bloom probably from July through September. These seeds do not have any requirements to germinate. So you can sow them without, without cold stratifying them or scarring them in some way. So I'm just going to go ahead and plant them with no cold stratification. They are very, very small seeds, so I will sow them right on the surface here. And then I am gonna put some poultry grit on top of them. You'll see that I use poultry grit and I also use coarse vermiculite. The reason why I'm choosing to use poultry grit on these seeds is because they are tiny and they are surface sown. So of course vermiculite can um, fly around in the wind um, and so that and is a much lighter product than the poultry grit. The poultry grit's heavier and it's gonna um, hold down everything underneath it in these cells. So that's why I'm choosing poultry grit versus coarse vermiculite. So are these flowers at all edible? And they are. The leaves can be harvested and they can be dried and used as flavoring in recipes or used in your tea. I might even try harvesting the leaves and using them fresh in a bath. That might be, that might be something to try as well. The plant has a foliage that's kind of like a silvery, greeny, gray color. And then when it does bloom, they have clusters of white blooms with little tinges of purple. And if you crush the leaves, you're really gonna get that very strong aromatic flavor. These guys also attract beneficial insects. So the, um, the parasitic and parasitoid insects are attracted to the Slender Mountain Mint. As far as propagation goes, Slender Mountain Mint cuttings can be taken in June. And from what I hear, they, they root up pretty easily. I haven't uh, tried that yet, but I definitely be trying that this year. Um, otherwise, they do form uh, colonies and spread via rhizomes, so you can also um, dig them up and divide them. I'm going to sow these and then I am going to treat them in two different ways. Because the Slender Mountain Mint does not require any cold stratification or any sort of process to break dormancy, I am going to sow them in this flat and put this flat outside. It's also going to share with um, a couple other plants that we'll be spotlighting that are of or also do not require anything to break their dormancy. And then I'm also gonna sew a smaller container and I'm gonna put it downstairs under the lights to see if I can get a head start on germinating those as compared to the ones that I put out in the natural environment. Okay, time to sew these up. See how tiny they are? And now it's time for a little vermiculite. I have this, this trailer hitch for my tractor. I use it to push the seeds and the vermiculite, push the vermiculite into the seeds, which pushes the seeds into the soil. Okay, so vermiculite is on on top of the seed cells. This is in, this flat is in a flood tray from Bootstrap Farmer, which I will, when I take this outside, I will put some water in it so that it can water from underneath. So the next step is to do the second part of my, 
uh, experiment here and I will sow the rest of the seeds in this little five by five, five inch by five inch, heavy duty plastic um, seed flat from Bootstrap Farmer. I actually have enough to save. If I can get them back into, you know what? I don't even know if that's worth it. It's not, they're all going in. They're all going in. Okay, so then I am just gonna put a little bit of vermiculite over top because this little seed tray is going to go in my basement. I wanna avoid fungus gnats and I am gonna put a little bit of cinnamon on top. Okay. When I put this downstairs, it's gonna get bottom watered for a little bit. And then we will see what we can get germinating. Just a note on germination time for native plants. I have found that native plants take a significantly longer time to germinate than do your cutting garden flowers and your vegetables. So if you are plant or sowing native plant seeds and you're doing seeds that don't have um, any cold stratification requirements or anything like that and you're putting them straight under lights just know don't give up because they some of them do take so long to germinate but they will germinate well that's it for today's native plant spotlight on this slender mountain mint thank you so much for joining me and if this content appeals to you then please consider liking, subscribing, or maybe even sharing with your gardening friends. I really appreciate you watching my video and I will see you again next time. Okay guys, one note before I actually leave you. If I haven't, I accidentally put my coarse vermiculite instead of the poultry grit on top of the slender mount mint. So I'm gonna give it just a little water from above using this makeshift watering can just so that I can get the vermiculite a little wet so it doesn't fly away. I may put a very, very, very thin layer of the poultry grit over top of this a little bit later. I don't know, but in case you caught that, that is coarse vermiculite, not poultry grit, and I would have preferred it to be poultry grit.